What's the most Mac Jiva crap you have ever pulled? I was in Germany in the US Army in the late 80s. We still had gasoline engine dodge trucks. We were returning from a parts run from another base and our mechanical fuel pump failed. We emptied the window washer reservoir and filled it with gas. We carried spare fuel with us and connected the line to the inlet of the carburetor. We used the washer button to fill the float bowl of the carb anytime the engine started to sputter and had to pull over every 20 minutes or so to top off the washer reservoir. Took us a little longer to get home, but we made it. Me and my friend went to a ski slope in his old Skoda, 86 model, looked like a 60s car. It was cold that night and after the skiing the doors of the Skoda had all frozen. My friend fixed it by pulling the rubber seal of one of the windows. He then proceeded to pee through the gap by the window onto the locking mechanism inside the door so he could unlock it. Problem solved. I think Mac Jiva would have been way better if he peed on stuff in every episode. It wasn't me, but my captain. We were fishing near the Chesapeake Bay Tunnel Complex and it began to get pretty rough, so we started heading in. About 5 minutes later, something obviously goes wrong with the engine. Investigation quickly shows the belt had snapped. The engine was a Chevy 350 small block from the 70s. It is getting rougher with each swells passing. As we hurry to don life vests our fearless captain drops tro, removes his tighty witties and proceeds to make a belt out of the elastic band. Two minutes later we are steaming back to port, thanks to Captain Commando. Captain Commando, the only time that nickname would be worn proudly. First car was a post Fiat Spider, the throttle cable broke, found a rubber band and used it to set the throttle 2 stroke 3 open at the carb, to speed up, turn the ignition on, to slow down, turn it off, drove 20 minutes home that way. You successfully transported your car into an old GTA game. Once a water main burst up the road from our house, and as we were downhill all the water began to run through the side of our property and threatened to flood the entire house. I took the slide off my sister's playhouse and took it up the road and placed it on its side and propped it up, which diverted the water far enough onto the road that our house completely avoided the torrent. Sorry neighbors further down the road. Neighborhood slip and slide. On a San Francisco, Paris business flight about 10 years ago, one hour after takeoff or so, a flight attendant announces the AV system is down and the 400 plus passengers won't be able to watch any movies for the remaining 10 hours. The passengers suddenly look like some no just died in the plane. I don't care I'm reading that really good book. After a couple of hours I am getting tired of this book and, well, since I am a video engineer propose my services to the head steward to take a look at your video system of yours. The thing won't power up. Okay, it's rack mounted. Four screws off with a plastic knife, reseated inside its rack which is a little bent by using some folded cardboard. No power cord, it's power on contact, shake it a tad, screw it back in, push power button, T-A-D-A-A-A. The thing is back to life. The steward announces to the whole plane the great news. I am a hero and gets free champagne for the rest of the flight. I walk back under heavy applause to my seat saluting my three clients seated a few rows behind me. I am the mythificking hero of flight AF 480. The end. Just yesterday I used a small rock 12 inches in diameter and a metal rod, heavy steel, 6 feet long to move a 1000 plus LBS boulder using leverage. My family was about to start looking to hire a bobcat operator. They all thought I was some kind of wizard after. My clutch failed in the middle of nowhere. Upon inspection, I discovered the slave cylinder had a leak. In my trunk I had these items. Electrical tape, window cleaner, water, zip ties, small socket set. I did not have any brake fluid, also used for hydraulic clutches. First I wrapped the leaking line in a double layer of electrical tape, then I lined up some zip ties along the patch and pulled them as tight as they would go with some pliers. Now to figure out how to fill the fluid, I had the window cleaner spray bottle, and some water. So I removed the sprayer part, stuck it in the water and primed it out. Then I just sprayed that sucker like my life depended on it to get as much water as possible out of it. Subarus have their brake fluid reservoir right next to the clutch fluid. I inserted the tube into my brake fluid reservoir, thankfully full, and aimed the nozzle into the clutch reservoir and added enough fluid to get to the minimum level. A quick clutch bleed later, I was back in business.
Ro. I was coming in here to impress everybody with the story about the time I fixed a blown radiator hose with nothing but an empty beer can, but after reading your post, I think I'm going to keep my pathetic little exploits to myself. When I would get in trouble as a youth of 14 or 15, my mom had a lockbox with a keypad entry system where she would keep my effects, Game Boy, phone, laptop, etc. One night, while I was grounded, I collected dust from our grandfather clock and coated the keypad in it. I asked my mom if she could help me wash some grapes in the kitchen, and then asked to use my phone to call a friend about a group project. The water on her fingers cleaned the dust off of four numbers, and then it was just a matter of trying the different combinations to discover the code. Dang, this plan would never have worked for me. Can you help me wash some grapes would not be a reasonable request for my mother. Helping my buddy and his wife clean up their new place, there was an old padlock on a hasp that couldn't be removed in any convenient way. I determined it was a pin tumbler type lock. I asked him for a paper clip, and while they were making fun of me I calmly broke the clip into two pieces, inserted one as a tension tool, then used the other to rake the pins above the shear line and about 30 seconds later pop I had the lock open, tossed the lock to my buddy and went outside for a smoke without even glancing at them. Bond, James Bond. Get this man to the safe. I worked for a little company that created webshops for all the big companies in the area. One Wednesday we were to supposed to push a big update onto the live servers and thereby making a ton of new features available to the public. Only problem, there was a huge rainstorm on Tuesday night. A window broke and the whole dang office was flooded. Almost all of the computers were completely toasted and most of the workers wouldn't dare to go into the office. So I decided to wade through the water and build this Frankenstein's monster of a PC with parts from the toasted computers. No PC case, just the bare components laying on top of a desk while standing in knee high water. I must have checked the electricity 20 times before finally turning the thing on while sitting on the desk. We barely managed to push the update to the live servers. I was locked out of my house in the middle of the night. All I had was some wire, some outdoor furniture and a garden hose. So I used a patio chair to smash the window. Your name really made this for me. Thank you. Me and my dad got stuck plowing a parking lot during that 3 feet snowstorm last winter. New England. We were stuck for 14 hours and both our phones died. In order to get in contact with my mother to let her know we were not dead, I took an old charger we found and used a box cutter to remove the connector and strip the wires. I just held the wires to the contact points on my battery and it actually took a charge. One time I was out camping and after firing up the grill, we realized that we did not have a spatula. As a solution, I shoved a beer can over the end of a stick and smashed it with a rock. It worked like a charm. Used a piece of scotch tape to record over a commercial VHS. I know, small time, but I was pre-teen and took apart the VCR to figure out why I could record on blank tape as much as I wanted, but not any of the others. Hours later, when I figured it out, I couldn't have been happier. The feeling was probably one of the things that got me into technology. Repaired a laser missile tracking system in Baluchistan on a hot 130F. Day with a Swiss army knife, leather belt, wire kothanga, and a pocket handkerchief. Dang circuit had shifted, opened it up with the Swiss army knife, used wire to jump at the melted connector, leather to insulate, handkerchief to tie it all up, passed the launch test, went back and fixed it with actual tools and spares the next day, but I felt like Angus all day. I was on a date once and I had a rusted out 1974 Impala. I had to unstick the butterfly valve on the carburetor, so I used my mascara wand to unjam it. Whoa. Four marriage proposals on Reddit today. Not too shabby. Sorry guys. Getting married in 20 days from today. I understood maybe 10% of the words here and I'm still oddly turned on. I successfully cooked a frozen pizza in a wok. I was with a girl I was seeing at the time. We wanted to go camping so we went out to the woods. But when we got there we realized we had forgotten a lighter so we couldn't make a fire. I bet sex that I could still make one. I took a pair of cheap headphones and took the wiring out of them. I then borrowed a cigarette from her and popped the hood to her car. Using the arc between the wire and the car battery, I lit the cigarette and then used that to start some leaves on fire. I had sex that day. 
caught a mouse with a Gatorade bottle and a fishing pole. I used part of a coat hanger to replace the underwire in my bra a few times. When you have G cups, it's worth fixing rather than blowing $60 plus every time the underwire breaks or tears through the fabric. In middle school I found a stash of rubber bands, like in the thousands in a janitor closet. Give a 7th grader a thousand rubber bands, and he can engineer a gun out of anything. Oh man. Repressed memories bubbling forth from the abyss. 8th grade. Rubber bands. Scraps of paper rolled into V darts. Girls in short skirts. The horror. Was backpacking and slipped down a cliff. I ripped open my chest pretty good and was about 2 days from medical. I had a basic sewing kit in my backpack and stitched myself up. The stitching held until I got back to civilization a couple days later and the doctors commented on how good my stitches were. Still have a big scar, but it is an awesome story. I actually held the shaft of a submarine together with duct tape for an entire deployment. Seriously, not kidding. Back in the days of rabbit ear antennae for TV, I was getting a pretty crappy signal. Lots of static and only a bit of an image and fuzzy sound. Two socks and a precariously placed CD case later, it was fixed right up and I had a great signal. To this day I cannot figure out why that worked. Pop-up headlight is broken from a fender bender. It is now permanently in the up position with the help of three blocks of wood, duct tape, and a decent amount of piano wire. Drunk people see it and feel that it would be a good trophy to have and try to steal it. None have been successful. I was driving a Mercedes 240D and ran out of gas. Couldn't get the thing to start. Apparently it had vapor lock. I happened to have a water pistol in the car. So I put some diesel in it, opened up the air intake, and squirted fuel into the air intake while my friend turned the ignition. Started right up. My friend and I went for a party goods run in his Volkswagen Sirocco. Halfway to our meetup the car suddenly died. Upon investigation, we found the cause was due to a broken accelerator cable. We used speaker wire to fashion a new cable. Then we connected one end to the cub and ran the other end around the firewall into the car. The wire would not pull correctly when connected to the pedal. So, we tied it to a stick that he used to prop the hatchback open. This worked to keep the car running, at least. However, the car was a stick shift. One man wasn't capable of steering, chaining gears, and operating the pull stick. From the passenger's side, I controlled the accelerator. My friend did the steering and gear changing. It took us a few miles to get the whole operation down pat. But, we did it. We also got a number of looks while sitting in traffic. By the time we made it home, we were pros. It was the first car that I have seen that required a pilot and co-pilot. A few years back, my roommate, who wasn't on the lease, lost his job and bailed on me. Needless to say this left me in dire straits. I got behind on bills and the electricity was promptly turned off. Q ingenuity. The apartment complex had two light bulbs outside each door that came on each night on a timer. To cure my infinite boredom in a dark house, I bought a couple of those screw-in adapters that turn light sockets into standard power outlets, plugged extension cords into them and ran them into the house. Bam. I instantly had a television, lamp, and a fan, could charge my phone, etc. And all on the complex's dime. Not my proudest moment, but I felt pretty crafty. You have been visited by the water papa. You will be blessed with sunny beach days but only if you come and swim safe. Papa if you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.